Hi guys, this morning we're going to be exploring our last distribution in statistical distributions and we're going to be having a look at what happens with continuous and discrete random variables, what happens to that distribution as we collect large, large, large amounts of data. Now I'm going to show you a little video here, um, as soon as I pop it up, where are we? Here we go. Alright, just have a little look at this collecting some data on the widths of cockle shells. Okay guys, as you saw, you saw a certain, a certain sort of peaky shape graph coming there. We call that a normal distribution and it occurs when large amounts of data are collected. Now, as you see here, we've got this perfect sort of symmetrical shape. Over the years, um, statisticians have experimented with tens of thousands of pieces of data from all different random variables and they've found that as the amount of data collected increases, the shape of this bell curve, if you like, gets closer and closer to perfect or you know, symmetrical about this given um, point here. And they've done some, some statistical analysis um, with this data. And here's some things that they've found repeatedly over the years. This red section here is what we call, I like to call the hot zone. And between a certain value here and here, after thousands of experiments, approximately 68% of data lies. And we have this very, very special point. He will talk about that in a minute. And then when we extend our bit over here to the green section here, what they have found, that there is a certain value here and here, symmetrical about here, that approximately 95% of data. Now I'm rounding these to the nearest nice whole number. If you go and explore the normal distribution you'll get things here to one, two decimal places but we just want to get a ballpark idea here. And lastly from this blue zone all the way across which is almost all our data except these little teeny bits right up the high end of the data and right down the low end of the data. It's around a, about um, between 98 and 99 just for today I'm going to say it's about 98% of data. The other things they've discovered that this point here is a measure of central tendency and when you've got a perfectly symmetrical distribution this point here is both the mean, median and mode. But Because of most of our statistics we deal with mean, I'm going to mark that there as the mean. Now this point here, the red zone above and below, this has to do with the spread of the data. This point here is one standard deviation above the mean. So I can write that the mean plus one standard deviation. And symmetrically down here, that's the mean minus one standard deviation. We move up to the green zone. This is basically another standard deviation above the mean. So we have mean plus two standard deviations. And symmetrically down here, we've got the mean minus two standard deviations. Up here, we go up to three mean plus three standard deviations and symmetrically down here mean minus three. Now since between these blue zones we got 98% of data we really don't need to consider four because these end bits are such small amounts of data. Now these figures are ballpark but it's nice to have an idea when you are dealing with um, statistical analysis of the normal distribution. Okay so let's have a look at what we do here. We got a class quiz which has a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 5. 
and it's a normally distributed set of data. Okay, and we want to find approximately, the reason I'm using approximately here because I just want you to use these approximations that we've been looking at. Later on we'll have a look at how technology can help us be more exact, but here we're just talking about ballpark understanding. Is it a large probability, is it a small one, and so on. So approximately what percentage of people earned above 80%? Okay, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to put in this information. Now I know something about the mean and standard deviation here, so this point here is the mean. So I'm going to put my mean down here. The mean is 80%. And our standard deviation is 5. So I'm going to put in my key points here. One, two, three standard deviations above. One, two, three standard deviations below and I'm going to put in these values because I can. I know my standard deviation now. So I know one standard deviation above is going to be 85, two above is going to be 90, 95. One standard deviation below is going to be 75, two below 70 and 65. And also we know that between 75 and 85 since that's one standard deviation above below to one above. We know approximately 68% of data lies. Between two below at 70 and two above at 90, we know approximately 95% of data lies. And these little end bits here between 65 and 95, three standard deviations above and below, we know approximately 98% of all our data lies. Okay, so let's have a look. Approximately what percentage of people earned above 80? Right, I'm all for the understanding and sketching out these things. Every time I have a normal distribution, I always have my distribution here with all my key values. So I'm going to have a look above 80. Here's 80. So on my graph, that would be all this here, including above up there. All right, now we know this is a symmetrical curve. So we know that from here above, half of our scores would lie. And from here down, we know the other half of scores would lie. So approximately what percentage of people earned above 80? Approximately 50% of our people. Now, if you took this for 100 pieces of data, you might have 48, 51. Can't be exact, but the more bits of data we uh, take, the closer to 50% it's going to be. Okay, let's have a look at another situation here. Approximately what percentage of people earn between 75 and 85? Okay, so I'm going to find those points here. Here's my 75, here's 85. So I'm looking at about what percentage of people got in this zone here. Well, that's from one standard deviation below, I mean minus one, to one above. And from our initial exploration, we know that that's about 68% in a perfect world. Not always, but the more bits of data we have, the closer it'll get to 68%. Let's have a look at another one. What percentage of people earn between 70 and 90? So let me find my 70 and my 90. So here we are. So I'm after this proportion of my normal distribution. Well, once again, we're going from one, two standard deviations below two, one, two, two above, so it's a mean plus two standard deviations. And as we know from before, we know that proportion is about 95%. Okay, now let's get into the ones where we've got to think a little bit more. Approximately what percentage of people, um, what percentage of people are below 75%? Okay, so here's 75. Below 75 is down here, including all the way down here. So let's shade that region. Okay, now what do we know about this distribution that could possibly help us? Well, we know that 50% lie above the mean. We know that 50% lie below. So all the way down here we're going to have 50%. But I also know that this little bit in here from here to here is going to be 68%. So what's from the mean to one below? It's going to be a half of 68%. So we know that's 34% there. So how could those two numbers help us get here? 
Okay, so we've got 50% and we're going to take away that 34%. So what have we got there? We have around about 16%. So from here down, around 16% because 16% and 34% add up to our 50%. So a little bit of math required there, that's okay. So approximately 16% of people got below 75 all right, approximately what percentage of people earned above 90? Okay, let's go up above 90. Here's our 90. We want everybody up here. Okay, so once again, let's think about what tools, what knowledge about the normal distribution will help us here. Okay, this is a really useful tool here. We know that 50% of people lie above our mean here. And in here, from from one uh, two standard deviations below to two above, we know is approximately 95%. So from the mean up here, that's going to be a half of that, isn't it? So we've got 95 divided by 2%, which I think, what's that, 42.5%? Okay. Less, less. Forty-seven and a half percent. All right, so the remaining up here is going to be our fifty percent minus our forty-seven and a half percent. So we get two point five percent up here. Two and a half percent of people uh, percent of people got ninety percent or above. All right, I think this is our last one. Approximately what percentage of people earn between sixty-five? and 85%. Okay, so let's go and have a look at that on our diagram. 65%, one, two, three standard deviations below, and up to 85. Oh, that's only one above. So a little bit of an asymmetrical question here. Okay, so let's have a look at that. What tools could we use once again um, about our normal distribution to find this? Well, we've used this bit before, this going from one standard deviation below to above is 68. So this bit here is going to be 68 divided by 2%, which was our 34%. So we've got 34% over here. And over here, from, from three standard deviations below to three above is 98%. So this bit here is going to be 98 divided by 2. So we've got 49% over here, from here to the mean, and from the mean to one above we've got 34, so we're looking at having 49% plus 34%, and what have we got, plus 34, we've got about 83% um, of our scores lie between 65 and 85 percent. Right, what you're going to do now, after these three, we've got, let me just show you, one, two, three, four. I'd like you to get together with um, your, let's say your five o'clock partner. I'd like you to do two of these questions and your five o'clock partner to do these questions and be ready to uh, share those when we come into class next. These notes here will be on the blog so you can go to the blog, um, either pause the video and have a look at the questions or go to the blog and have a look at the notes. Okay, good job, have fun.